Hello there, everyone. This is Big Benedict. We're playing Castlevania Lords of Shadow on Paladin difficulty, and this is the Castle Hall, one of my favorite chapters in the entire game. We have a couple of gems to get, and a vampire war game to play, which you either really like it, or you strongly detest it and wish it wasn't in this game, and uh, don't want it to be in the next game, but I actually hope it is in the next game. But I'll discuss it when I get there. Um, you have to defeat the thing uh, without losing more than three pieces, and it is all based on... Uh, well, I, I shouldn't, say, shouldn't say it's all based on luck, because that kind of implies that you're, you're, you don't even have a mind to think with while you're playing it, and it does require you to have some forethought about where to place your chess pieces, but anyway, that was the airway flap that I did right there, it's uh, triangle XX, and uh, for this, for these sections here, you're going to want to focus on uh, taking down uh, the blinds. Now, some of the, the blinds are boarded up, so you'll have to do quick time events for those, but I just think this is a really creative level, and, and the music's just gorgeous. Um, so anytime the vampires walk into the sunlight, because it's dusk at this point, and shortly it will be nightfall, and that is the looming threat of this chapter. You know, once the sun goes down, Gabriel's going to be in real trouble, and that means that we're going to be in real trouble too. So there's a, a really intense fight right before you, you play chess, and... It's somewhat optional, but you do have to do the majority of the fight. It's just, at what point do you want to flee? That's pretty much how it goes. So, um, obviously you can get interrupted during this. And we have a checkpoint. I, I meant when you were te tearing down those boards, you can get interrupted. So, if you want to, you can use fairies to um, to disarm these guys and, and stun them so that they can't attack you. Or just attack them. Uh, because they, they will never stop spawning until you complete the shutters and, and, and take the blinds down. And that's kind of how it works because you you the, the game wants you to have constant pressure. And you see how I was facing away from that statue and I still hit it? That's because when I released, I was aiming at the statue with the left analog stick. So that's what I was talking talking about uh, in, in the previous chapter when we were doing the Abbey Mirror puzzle. So... So that section's done. Now you want to uh, go around and hit everything and try to regroup some of your losses if you've used a lot of holy waters or fairies. And uh, up ahead we have some more vampires to kill and uh, an animated armor to to worry about. So up ahead there's also one blind that you can just pull the the cloth off right away. I think I'm going to go to it immediately. I, I like to do that because if any of the vampires do walk into that, they'll um, they'll burn up. It's really cool. I, I just I think this is, as I've said, it's really creative, and I just love the music. I love I love the the snow here, and uh, I really like the fact that these vampires are not grabbable enemies. If they were grabbable enemies like goblins or or the ghouls or something like that this game would, would just be a joke as far as difficulty uh, where they're where they were concerned um, but the fact that you can't simply just grab them um, really makes uh, the game a lot more difficult and uh, the, the, they're not e the easiest of enemies either uh, especially these this breed here I don't know if they have a different variety but what I've noticed is that they they constantly do an aerial attack where they'll jump and uh, fly right at you, and you can't block or, or or parry it because it's it's one of those attacks where they've got that white animation, uh, uh, that white aura around them, meaning just that that you can't block or parry. It's it's just the game's way of telling you that. Uh, but they constantly do it, so you're you're going to be seeing me. Uh, well, you're that right there. I think that's the move they, they tried to do. And you might see an edit right here because I had enough money to purchase my final item. So that's where the, the edit was, right about there. So, see that that, that attack that the guy did, did right there? They constantly do it. 
I, and I'm not really used to them doing that too often either, so uh, maybe it's a, a move that it's unique to this chapter. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, the, a, a funny thing. Definitely take off Laura's fucking voice so that she doesn't um, bother you while you're playing chess because she'll do a move and then she gives you like two or three seconds and then she starts bitching about hurry up you're taking all day or, or something or you know I'm losing my patience I'm losing my patience so go into the settings go into the configuration I think it is and put this put the voice effects all the way to the left take those off because it's it's just it's so annoying so just get that bitch's voice off so you can actually play and and, and deliberate your move because Seriously, after like three seconds, she's she's bitching about you to hurry up. So uh, it's it's really nice to not have her on there. So that's I would definitely do that if I were you. And we're gonna be seeing Laura a little bit more in the in the DLC. And in the next, it's I don't think it's in the next chapter, but it's the chapter where she, where it, it's a hard trial where we have to take out ten of her. Uh, what are they called? I don't know what they're called offhand, but they're those um, large toys of hers that she's brought to life. So the location of the second, or is it the only gym in this stage? I don't know. I think it was. It, it really stumped me for quite a while. Um, you know, not recently, but when I was in initially playing this game, looking for that final, uh, that final gym that stumped me. I thought that that would have it but it wasn't so uh, don't worry about using your shadow magic here you're gonna have a chance and then we have the puzzle where we're uh, using our light and shadow magic uh, to hit the plates so here's a a cutscene that I edited out now we're gonna go over to this this way and you're just gonna have to humor me because I'm I'm one of those people like in God of War or, uh, Ninja Gaiden. I, I just love going around and smashing things, um, especially when I'm getting items that I need. But I don't know what gem it is, but it's up to the left. So I, th I think you can get up there with a double jump, but there is a a handhold for you to grab. So anyway, all all is quiet until you solve the puzzle, and then you're gonna have a slew of vampires come out. Um, I don't know quite how many there are, but there are a lot of them. And uh, if you wanted to, you could just stand by the the neutral element statue and you know uh, fill up and uh, cap out with the magic and use your ultimate light and shadow magic. That's the most efficient way to do it uh, in conjunction with throwing holy waters. But I I don't know. Um, Personally, I would do that if I weren't doing a guide, but it's a fun fight, and I, I enjoy doing it, and the really suspenseful thing about it is, if you do go over to the door, there it's heavily barred, and it, it very, very slowly releases the bars from you the whole time, so the whole time you're doing the fight, um, you know, it, it, one is thinking, hurry up, have these bars raised quicker so I can go through the door, and it's going at a snail's pace and and that's the kind of the idea um, because you want to go through the door to save yourself and uh, you know nights night has fallen the vampires are, are are in a pack hunting you and it's gonna start right now actually the benches are back here because I I did die actually over here go figure but uh, this is the main area where they are they're all going to be coming from this location. You can go wherever you want to. And you'll see me use some ultimate ultimate light and shadow magic. But I, I just don't like to abuse it. Especially, you know, if it looks like I'm, I'm being cheap. And it's not because I'm worried about people's impressions of me. It's just that I, I, I feel guilty when I'm playing that, you know, I, I'm, over, I'm, I'm exploiting something and... You know, I, I, it, it would be nice if more people had the, those kind of impeccable gaming ethics like I do. And I'm not saying I'm not, uh, you know, I, I don't take the easy road out sometimes because I do. But 
Um, I like to have, you know, when I'm presenting the public on YouTube, a guide, I like to have some diversity. I like to have a fun fight. You know, if, if, if I were watching a guide like this, I wouldn't want to watch a person who's simply spamming the ultimate light or the ultimate shadow. I would want to watch what I'm doing here and you know it it still could use a little bit more diversity even though I do do a wealth of moves there's so many moves in this game I can't believe it but I don't know I guess that's what, what guide makers well the good guide makers do they, they make content that they would want to see but look at all these vampires it's it's just really incredible and the thing is their uh, their numbers are so high because it's it's dark now and um, obviously they can't hunt during the day and the door is open so at this point if you wanted to you can just run through the door but I'm a fighter and you get a hefty reward for any time you you do a fight that you're not um, re required to do you'll, you'll get a lot of, I think you'll get all your items just you know uh, all, all, all refilled all your sub weapons just completely refilled if you don't have a dark crystal they'll give you a dark crystal They'll give you all your silver daggers, all your holy waters for your efforts, plus all the experience points, which at this point I don't need any experience points, except you do use experience points to unlock things, uh, story, uh, story things like uh, the characters and artwork and stuff like that, which I've already done and have no use to do. But uh, that that's a pretty good move, a pretty good aerial move to do the airway flap X, uh, excuse me, uh, triangle XX. And then once you're in the area, you can use the R2 button. Um, what you cannot do, though, is if you're in the area, you can't do that downward punch that we've become accustomed to by being in the air and then pressing the R2 button because these are latchable enemies. But anyway, let's play the Vampire War Game. Okay, here's the Vampire War Game. The puzzle award upon completion is 1,500 experience points, which you do get every single time. This is a board game similar to chess, it says, for two players. The objective. the objective of the game is to annihilate all the pieces of the opponent. The rules. During each turn, players determine which pieces can be moved using a spinning wheel. When they lose two pieces, they will be granted a second spin per turn. After losing another two, they will receive a third spin, so you have three spins in a row. All of the pieces can move to an empty square or attack an adjacent enemy piece during a turn. Apart from having different statistics, as you can see to the right, each piece has an extra power. The lycanthropes can move two squares instead of only one. The vampires can drain life from an adjacent piece, dealing less damage but healing themselves in exchange. So if you want to deal deal more damage, you don't press heal, you press um, attack. The necromancers can summon a zombie anywhere in the board and can attack a square um, and can attack at two squares of distance, ignoring armor value. Okay, so what I wanted to do after this was just take a, uh, a few moments to look at the pieces themselves. If you look on the right side of the screen, there's four pieces, three of which have relevance. Uh, the, the pawn really doesn't matter too much, the bottom right. Now, we have the lycanthropes, the vampires, and the necromancers. The lycanthropes, the lycanthrope in the top right there, You'll see that beside each character it has a sword, a heart, and a sh what I believe is supposed to represent a shield. So, what the shield means to me is how much they can defend themselves, but the heart too, I, I, I don't know. They This is the, you know, all that's given for explanation, so we really have to venture guesses where we don't know I mean I haven't looked on the internet too much but the lycanthrope hits the hardest that's the most important thing to know about him and he can guard extremely well too I think that's what it means by the heart with the five uh, five notches in it right there um, so I don't even know what the shield means what that would mean uh, he's got if you hit the lycanthrope He's got pretty good protection, so I don't know why he, he has only two of the f of the five marked there. Uh, but the vampire, he's got three out of five for his hits, and four out of five for his heart, five out of five for the shield, so he could take some pretty good damage. Now the 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 necromancer, 
hits hits very well. In fact, I don't really agree with four out of five. I, I think they hit pretty damn hard. You only need to hit other enemies a couple times with those guys, but they can't defend themselves. That's the crux of their existence. And as you can see, the pawn on the bottom right has no power and can't defend himself. They're they're just a distraction. So, um, what I and I'm sorry I can't explain that is better than I did right right there. But I'm not an RPG guy. I don't bother myself too much with st statistics and things like that. I'm not good with mathematics. You know, and if I'm going to be completely honest about it, so. This this war game is not hard, except if you're doing the trial, which mandates that you can't lose more than three pieces, or it'll immediately say trial failed. So it's not very hard whatsoever. But when you when you are doing this trial, you're gonna. It, it took me a few a couple hours to do to get a victory in. Sometimes you you just can't get in a victory. Now. It is a little bit of luck based, maybe even marginally so or or a lot you know depending on your outlook of it, but it is you moving the pieces, making the decisions, so it's not completely luck it is um, there is a, a component of intellect to it, so you you will need to be skilled and I mean you can't just be a brain dead fool trying to move the pieces but anyway let, let's take a look at, at at my run here. I have done this with only losing two pieces. If you want to consult my other channel on my trials, uh, it doesn't really matter though, it, it, because as long as you succeed, that's good, that's great. And I've never been able to do it having lost only one piece. I, I don't think that's possible, honestly. But anyway, it you either hate this game or you like it. I, I really enjoy it, but it is frustrating trying to get in a victory when you're continually getting dealt losing, uh, you know, a quote unquote a losing hand uh, with the spin of the roulette wheel here. So uh, let's take a look at this. And, um, um, uh, let's let's take a look right now. Okay, so we're gonna begin this game, and the game gives you the first move. So you get to you get to press it first and and decide where you want to go. Um, you'll notice that when I use the necromancer, I, I oftentimes will summon the what are those called? The ghouls or there's something they're they're just pawns. They they'll get destroyed in one hit, but the thing about this is it's on paladin mode and the the AI always goes, well not always, but uh like 95% of the time it'll go for the pawns. So if you're if you're trying to attack with another piece and you don't want your main piece to be destroyed and you want the the AI to get distracted, you need to use the pawns. Um, so set them up and use them very wisely. And what you don't want to do, in in my opinion, is to be too aggressive. I just let the the AI come to me. So you really don't want to lose your what are the the lycanthropes because they're the strong no yeah the lycanthropes um, the vampires see that hit right there it's a damn powerful hit and likewise I got damaged pretty well but the vampires can take a punch I think that's what they were talking about you notice that the necromancers can attack at a, at a diagonal and just be careful of that. I, I so many times I've been playing and I, I just I, n I didn't notice that I was at a diagonal and the computer hit me. The computer likes to hit you with diagonal hits of the necromancer. So it's really up to you if you want to be bold and and it, because it really does come down to a roll of the a spin of the wheel I should say. Uh, but here I, I got the necromancer. I don't think I can hit him, but I'm gonna, oh they're called zombies. My bad. So I'm going to set up a, a zombie over here. And you have two of each piece originally, so press the L1 and the R1 button to switch between the two and control each of those. And, um, okay, so this is basically just going to be a play by play. You see, the Necromancer went for the pawn right there. Now I'm in a good spot to attack with my Lycanthrope. I haven't lost any pieces yet but that will change pretty soon. So here I'm going to attack with the vampire and fortunately he hit with a reasonable attack. Sometimes I hit with the vampire and it does absolutely hardly any damage. Sometimes uh, 
then the computer will hit me like immediately after with the same character and I'll get half my life taken away. It's just really bizarre. Maybe there's a little bit of randomness to it. I, I don't know, but it's not fair, whatever it is. So whenever you have the Necromancer selected for, for use, make sure you, you examine the situation, see if you can use that at a diagonal. And if not, just, just drop pawns. I can't tell you how important they are to distract the AI. Because if you've got a, a lycanthrope and you see how I have a pawn and a lycanthrope there, the computer will most likely go for the pawn. He won't even try to hit me. And you can lose as many pawns as you want. Uh, having a, a pawn of yours kill doesn't count for, see how many times I've had these killed? It doesn't count f towards your, your score of losses. So what I should do is move my lycanthrope up once so I, so I could be at a diagonal. Um, you definitely want to take that bitch's voice off so you don't have to hear her while you're playing because uh, Laura, she will be she will pr be protesting and nagging the entire time so you want to take the sound effects off the voice sound effects, which I did um, because there's, there's just nothing worse than playing this and, be, and, and being nagged every two seconds to hurry up so, ooh, let's see and that cost me that little mistake ooh, it didn't kill me though, That's that's bizarre so I, I, what I should do is move this vampire out of harm's way, but I dropped the pawn there, hoping that the AI would would take to it. But I but I was at that uh, a cursed diagonal right there, so I couldn't do anything about it. So remember, with the vampires, you can move two spaces. Okay, so I've lost one piece, almost two. So this is kind of just a, a punching match here, and I lost to the computer right there. So I've lost two pieces. And if you if you remember, you'll get more spins. Um, the more pieces you've lost, the more spins you're going to get. So you'll get two spins if you've lost, I think, two pieces. And then if you lose three pieces, the computer will give you three spins. So you'll you'll end up getting. But that, that's that's for the computer too. So it. So many times, also, I've been playing this, and I'll, I'll just get in a bad streak of of losses, and then the computer will get in a lot of good, like constant. Like if I don't want them, if I don't want the computer to get something, the all it'll always in, it'll always get it. You know, that kind of thing will usually happen. So I've lost a couple of pieces. It's at, at this point, it gets pretty tense, and you, you get pretty nervous, but. Okay, so I've got a diagonal going here, so I want to attack the the necromancers. They do huge amounts of damage to enemies, but they 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 cannot protect themselves. So you have to protect them, or or just back away constantly, and uh, never never even worry about the pawns. If you, if you have an opportunity for a shot, don't waste it on trying to kill a pawn unless you're at the cusp of death. Um, and I think the only reason I did it right there was because that guy was annoying me. But it's down to four versus two right here. The computer's going to have three attacks every single time, so they get three spins of the roulette wheel. I think I get two. But I, I guess it's just to balance the game that they've done this. But it does, it does really start draining your confidence when the computer's getting a lot of successive. See how I just lost my necromancer right there, and I could have easily lost this, but. I only need one more piece to take down right here, and it's a necromancer, so it's it's just kind of, you know, I can't afford to, to lose any pieces, but the vampires are pretty resilient. Looks like the computer cast a pawn right there, so I'm just going to have to to creep up, and also press, hold down, um, hold down the L2 button to see the life of your characters. I, you, you've seen me do it numerous times. Unfortunately, you have to hold it and keep holding it. You can't just have it. See that? You can't just have it be the whole time. You, you have to hold it. It's not, not good. I don't like that whatsoever. So, I'm summoning pawns here, trying to cause a distraction so when I um, go up for an invasion, the computer will try to hopefully will target the other will target the 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 ineffectual piece of mine rather than the, the piece that could 
in this whole game of mine. So uh, it came down right here to, to having uh, pretty good luck with, uh, you see, finally, oh, I just need, I think I need to hit the guy one more time with a lycanthrope. And I was even hitting him with the pawn here. And uh, yeah, I finished him off with hitting him with a pawn, I believe. Yeah, so that took him down. So always avail yourself of that too. And the fun thing now you can do is to smash the chess pieces. And uh, before you leave, don't forget to grab uh, the the gem off this corpse right here. And you've cleared it. It's pretty challenging. It, it really is, and it's it's frustrating when you can't win either. It's but when you when you do win, you you're not so mad. But anyway, that's the entire level. It's a long level, but I, I really like that level. I think it's one of the finest levels in this game. And creative, too. I mean, not many games will have this level of, of creativity and depth, in my opinion. But anyway, we've cleared that level, and the next level is 6-4. We got the upgrade, we got all, all our pieces, all our gems, and we cleared it on Paladin mode. So thanks for watching.